Good morning and welcome to St. James's on this fifth Sunday of Easter. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues in your bulletin or on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold their sins against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. 
And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Earlier this week, I was uh, mindlessly scrolling through my Apple News feed, and I saw a headline pop up that said, U.S. General Declares New Public Health Epidemic. Oh no, I thought. Not again. So I clicked on the article, and to my surprise, the headline had nothing to do with COVID this time around. It had nothing to do with Zika or with any of the other biological diseases that we might think of. But the U.S. Surgeon General said, we have an epidemic of loneliness. Loneliness is now officially a public health epidemic. Surgeon General went on to say that the health risks of loneliness are as deadly as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Social isolation raises the risk of premature death by 30% and leads to higher rates of heart disease, stroke, anxiety, depression, and suicide. Now, we could spend all day trying to figure out why there has been this rise in loneliness. For example, maybe we can point to the pandemic and say after a few years of some degree of separation and isolation, it just, it just settled in and we're all lonely. But the data suggests that this, uh, this was already present before the pandemic, and the pandemic just accelerated what was already happening. Maybe then we can point to social media or, or technology in general. Maybe. Maybe. But I can't help but think that at least some of the loneliness epidemic has to do with the increasing divisions and hostility between people. Division, I can't help but think, inevitably leads to loneliness. C.S. Lewis somewhat prophetically described this reality in his allegorical portrayal of hell in his book, The Great Divorce. In the book, Lewis describes hell as this, as this gray town where everyone can simply think into existence a grandiose mansion for them to live in. 
But here's the catch. Everyone ends up living in these lavish mansions, but hundreds of thousands of miles, if not light years, apart from everyone else. Because any time anyone gets too close to another person, they quarrel, he says. And when they quarrel, they simply think a new mansion into existence that's even farther away. They keep on separating themselves one from another until the point where they can't see another person. They simply remove themselves from the conflict instead of working through it. This happens over and over and over again until people are so spread out that they never even see another living being. How common is it in our present day to have a disagreement or a conflict or anything like that and to just sever the relationship, to end it all together, to figuratively think a new mansion into existence? Disagreement without reconciliation leads to division, which leads to loneliness. Our gospel today is one of the most popular, if not the most popular, gospels to be read at funerals. In fact, I wonder who came to your mind as Doug was reading the gospel Whose funeral were you transported back in time to? Typically, when this passage is read in the funeral, the emphasis is on the hope that our loved one, our loved one is now with God in eternity, as it should be. The emphasis is always on the person who passed away. But, but when we do this, when we almost exclusively read this passage, just in, when we focus just almost exclusively on a single person, we can miss a couple of, of key details when Jesus says, in my Father's house, there are, many there are many dwelling places. First, Jesus says that there are many dwelling places in his Father's house. There are many. There's not just one or a few there are many. To me, this means that in heaven, in the new heavens, in the new earth, in eternity, whatever you want to call it, there will be people there who you are surprised to see. That also means there will be people there who are surprised to see you. There will be people who this side of eternity think differently than you, who vote differently than you, who live differently than you do. And I wonder how we might go through life differently if we lived as if this were true. In my father's house, there are many, emphasis on many dwelling places. Second detail that we might miss when we hear this gospel at a funeral is that Jesus uses the metaphor of a house to describe heaven. He doesn't say my father's neighborhood or my father's town or my father's country has, has many houses for you to come live in. But he says my father's house, singular, has many dwelling places. In stark contrast to Lewis's allegorical hell with many mansions, millions and millions of miles apart, Jesus describes heaven as his father's singular home. So not only will there be people in heaven who you're surprised to see, but, but we're going to be living under the same proverbial roof. Oof. A house conveys much different kind of relationship than Lewis's gray town, doesn't it? In college, I lived in an intentional Christian community with 
five to ten other people, and we were all under the same singular house, all under the same roof. As a community, we ate meals together, we did dishes together, we played games together, we prayed together, we, we did all of life together. And when you do that, when you get five to 10, 18 to, to 22 year olds, inevitably you're going to have quarrels. As Lewis said, it's gonna happen. We knew it was gonna happen. So before we even moved into the house, we made a covenant with each other. And we covenanted to be in the type of relationship that was defined by things like honesty, repentance, grace, forgiveness, reconciliation. So when there were issues, we were honest about them. We repented. We extended grace. We forgave and we reconciled. When there were issues, we intentionally moved closer together instead of moving farther apart, as is our natural inclination. But without such a covenant, without some kind of shared understanding that we would relate to one another in this way, living together in a single house would have been completely impossible. In my father's house... Jesus says, there are many dwelling places. One of my favorite preachers, Sam Wells, summarized the reality of this sentence beautifully when he said, what's vital about heaven is not still being. It's being with. Heaven is being with God, being with each other, being with ourselves, and being with the renewed creation. It's the with that counts, not just the continued being. And then, and then he goes on to say how this impacts us today. As Christians. All of our life as citizens of the kingdom of God, he says, is preparing to be with God and with one another forever. Our job as Christians is to imitate the life of heaven. Our job as Christians is to imitate the life of heaven. So as Christians on this side of the Easter story, we know how it all ends. Because Christ has risen, we know that we were made to and will one day be with God and be with each other forever. And so our most profound witness to a world plagued with an endemic of loneliness and isolation and division is to be a people whose common life together is defined by, by honesty and repentance and grace and forgiveness and reconciliation. Our most, common, our most powerful witness is to continue living together in the same house, to move closer together and not farther apart when there's division or disagreement or conflict. Our most powerful witness to a risen Christ is, as Wells says, to imitate the life of heaven. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all the
Alleluia. What was dead shall live, what was dark shall shine, what was forgotten shall be remembered. For the Lord is risen and walks among us. Let us confidently bring before God the needs of all our world, asking God for renewal, saying, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. God of life, in gratitude and great joy, we laud you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection. Give us hope, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, for all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no more power over us, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. For all who suffer and all who mourn, that you will wipe away all tears, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we have the persistent faith of Mary Magdalene and the surprised belief of Peter and John. May we long to be your sign of life in our world, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. May we be one in faith with all who have died in Christ, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We pray for all in our congregation who are grieving and in need of care, as well as those who provide care for the grieving and those in need, especially our Stephen ministers. Please join me in lifting up to God those who have asked for our prayers especially Linda Barnett, Steve Barnett, AJ and Joy Brewer, Paige Nance Brock, Stacy Furs, Butch Butler, John Cook, Vicki Driscoll, Paula Kramer Edmonds, Tom Evelyn, Mary Fox, Jessica Friend, Jennifer Griffith, Helen Hill, Thomas Lucente, Anne Malone, Don Marston, the Martin family, Bunky Miller, John Murphy, Carol Pearsall, Ethel Powell, Courtney Reynolds, Mickey Ramsey, Sandra Salmon, Joyce Sanford, Larry Sanford, Phil Schwab, Bobby Smith, Bradford Smith, Josh Sane, the Stone family, Emily Taffel, Meryl Thorny, Langdon Tollett, Anne Turnbull, Bobby Ewrop, Carol Whitley, Nelson Williams, Susie Witter, Aaron Wright, Zara Zaruga, I. Janae, Josh, Kevin, Lee and Seth, also John Philpot. We pray for renewal and refreshment for John while he is on sabbatical. May his time away be life-giving and restful. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the congregations and clergy of Christ Church in Charlottesville, St. George's in Fredericksburg, St. Paul's Memorial in Charlottesville, and Ware in Gloucester. We ask for your blessings on the marriage of McNair Jennings, daughter of Elizabeth Cabell and Joseph Jennings III, and granddaughter of Priscilla Cabell and Graham Cox, son of Cynthia and Michael Cox, who were married here yesterday. We give thanks for the lives and ministries of all who celebrate their birthdays this week, especially those who celebrate their birthdays today. Ed Brooks, Betty Jenkins, Kathy McGeehy, Randy Smith, and Jeffrey Wilt. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember G. Gilmer Minor III, who died recently, and Edwin Hyde, Camilla Alsop Hyde, and Carlton Page Moffat Jr., in whose memory the flowers at the altar are given.
us. The paradox of life from death and community from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death and for the rising which brings us to life. We pray as we live through Jesus, the risen one, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share a sign of peace. Greetings and welcome to all of you this morning. It's great to have you with us for worship. This morning we have some recognitions that we want to, um, uh, or some folks that we want to recognize and honor. And so the uh, youth choir is making their way down and we will be awarding the crosses and ribbons to the various members of the youth choir for their participation this year. So Mark and all right, here we go. So let's give a round of applause for the youth choir as they come in. or such a blessing, and uh, here they are. So, I got this just in time to hand it off to someone else. <laughs> so, first year chorister, John Ackerley with a white ribbon. Second year, oh, please hold your applause to the very end. Um, second year chorister, Miss Rose Harbach. Five year chorister, Victoria Carter, with a five, with a gold ribbon. Five year ribbon, Miss Marla Van Dusen, also gold. Oops, sorry, Anna. <laughs> A five-year ribbon, Anna Ray with a gold. And now we move to the really heavy hitters. Miss Sarah Hopper with eight years. She gets a broad red. The Hoppers have been with us for hundreds of years. <laughs> they have four girls and two of them, one's graduated from college and the other one's in college and we have two of them here still. Uh, eight years of service, Miss Tyndall Hopper broad red. Nine years of service, Andrew Escoli, broad blue. Nine years of service, Julianne Eckstein, broad blue. And our seniors this year, 
we had a brand new chorister this year as a senior, Ryan McComb. He gets one white ribbon to take to college with him. <laughs> uh, Mr. Thomas Disharoon with a broad red eight years of service. Miss Muriel Lewis, nine years of service, a broad red. Miss Georgie Escoli, 10 years of service, a broad blue. It's the wrong color. I'm sorry, broad silver. <clears throat> And finally, Elizabeth Eckstein, 10 years of service, a broad silver. This is your youth choir. Sarah and I also just wanted to take this moment to recognize Georgie Ascoli as well as a senior acolyte. She's had seven years of acolyte ministry with us with St. James's. One final thing I would like to say is she is such a dependable acolyte, and there have been many times when we have needed someone, and she has stepped up, and we are just so appreciative, and we'll miss you. awarding of the crosses and ribbons to the choristers is always one of my favorite days in any church because I was a 10-year chorister myself, so I love that. Uh, welcome again. I'm the Reverend Amelia Arthur, your priest in charge while John's on sabbatical, and it's great to be with all of you. If you are new or visiting this morning and you would like to uh, learn more about St. James's or be in touch with us or connected, you can fill out a visitor card and put it in the offertory bin or hand it to one of the ushers in the back. There's lots going on in the life of our community in the next couple of weeks, so just a few things that I want to make sure are on your radar. The first is that in two weeks, on May 21st, the bishop will visit Bishop Harris at both services, and we will be doing confirmation for youth at 9 o'clock, and then at 11.15, we will be uh, having a group of youth from Christ Church in Glen Allen be confirmed here with us, as well as our adult confirmands and our adults who are being received into the Episcopal Church from other denominations. So that'll be a lovely day, and we'll have a uh, reception in Valentine Hall in between the services. So I hope that you are here with us. Also, the next week after that, Memorial Day weekend, we will be moving to our summer worship schedule. Our 8 and 10 o'clock summer worship is going back to our pre-pandemic summer worship time. So the 8 o'clock service will be outdoors, weather permitting, or in here if the weather is bad. A 9 o'clock fellowship hour, and then a 10 o'clock service in here. So just have that on your radar that in three weeks, services are at 8 and 10. There's lots of other stuff going on in the community, so please do check your e-chimes for more information. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Eucharistic Prayer B continues on page 367 or in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed James, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please join me in praying the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have spiritual in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with lives and sins of God.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.